Okay, so um, we're going to create another box. Click in the top view with my left mouse button. Hold and drag to the opposite corner and then let go. And then from there, I'm going to push my mouse upward to give the box some height. All right, once I've done that, I want to be able to modify my box. You'll see up here on the ribbon, right here where the cursor is, you'll see if I hover over select and move, it's this little cross with two arrows on it, or a plus sign with two arrows on either end. And next to it is, is the select and rotate, and then the select and uniform scale. Those buttons will allow me to move, rotate, and scale my objects. They'll also allow me just to select it. Now, once I've clicked on that first Select and Move tool, you see how this appeared with the arrow and the yellow? That is called a gizmo. The white is my cursor. This is called the gizmo. And I had to find that out the hard way. That was fun. It disappeared once, and I didn't know how to turn it back on because I didn't know what it was called. <laughs> It's called a gizmo. Okay, so each, each object has its own associated gizmo, and it's located at the pivot point on the object. And the, the pivot point is um, placed by 3D Studio Max by default. You can move it, and I will show you how to do that. But for right now, we're going to just leave it where it is um, and work with how to get the box to be the size we want it to. Okay, so I selected move, selected the box. I know that it's selected because I can see this blue line around the box. Now when I click off of it, all I see is the box and I can't do anything, I can't move it. You have to select it and get the gizmo in order to be able to, to move it, rotate it, scale it, and modify it. So I'm gonna come back over here to the right hand side and next to my create tab, I'm going to click on my Modify tab. And it will now tell me the parameters of that box. You're going to get information only for the object that you have selected. If you have more than one object selected and they're not identical, it won't, it won't give you um, information for this. Everything will be grayed out. All right, so the length of my box is, as you can see, is 57 point something. So I'm going to highlight this, and on my keyboard, I'm going to change that number to 50. Hit the Enter key, and you see that it squished my box, the length of my box, down to 50. My width says 76. I'm going to type in 100, and it made that adjustment to my box. And then I'm going to change the height to 75, and hit Enter. And you see what happens. I can now control the size of my box, length, width, and height under the Modify tab by first having selected my object and then coming in here and adjusting the parameters. Okay, So I now have a box. Click on it again. Its height is 50. I'm sorry, its length is 50. Its width is 100 and its height is 75. And then I'm going to come down here and pick this last icon on the top row down here in the bottom corner to get everything to zoom in so I can see it. Now, I'm in my top view, and I know this because it's highlighted yellow, and I'm going to, with my mouse, I'm going to scroll out on the scroll wheel. That works to scroll in and out as well. Okay, I'm going to scroll out. I'm going to come up here, make sure I've got my Select and Move tool highlighted right here. I'm going to select the box. And now I can do, I can move this a um, number of ways. If I just let, select that green arrow, it will lock me into that Y axis. And I won't be able to move it anywhere but up and down. If I select the green, I mean the red arrow, it will lock me on that Y axis and I can only move back and forth. You see the dark black line here on the grid? This, where they cross, is the zero, zero coordinate. And so 
Um, it initially, I believe, drew it. Yeah, initially would draw it right there at the zero, zero coordinate. Now, if you want to move it diagonally, you have to come in to this yellow area. And you see how your cursor changes from an arrow to a double arrow? Click and hold, and now you can move it diagonally or any other way that you want. But if you want to restrict your location movement or your, lo your lo locomotion to an axis, just click on that arrow, the green arrow or the red arrow, and it will restrict movement to the axis. Coming inside when it's a yellow box will allow you to move it all the way around. Okay. Um, same thing with rotation. The tool next to the Select and Move tool is the Select and Rotate. I'm going to get a different gizmo. Don't use the outside one. Use this yellow inside one. And when I select it, it allows me to rotate my box from the top view in the top view. Uh, you can come down here to the bottom and put in exact numbers, or I find the easiest thing to do is you have a re percent snap toggle up here. See right here? It's right under the word custom. Percent snap toggle. If I select that and then rotate, it's going to allow me to rotate by a percentage. Let's see which one's the other one. If I go to the left and hit the angle snap toggle to the left of that, it's going to allow me to snap to five degree increments. And so I'm rotating by five degree increments. And it's a nice snap to allow me to do a very clean rotation to a increment of five. It's like so that's 45, 90, oops, 180. <laughs> there we go. And it allows me to snap that. Now, when you're not rotating or using the snap, make sure you turn it off. Otherwise, it will snap to everything and drive you insane. Um, okay, and then to the right of my rotate, I can scale. And this is the gizmo associated with select and scale. You want to stay inside the yellow to scale it uniformly. If you go here into this upper yellow area, it won't scale it uniformly. See, it does not scale it uniformly. You want to be in the bottom if you want to scale it up and down uniformly. You can also select the just the y-axis to scale it in and just the x-axis to scale it in. Or you can scale both axes at the same time. Okay, now that is just for the top view. It works the same way but with different axes in the front view. So if I want to move it, I'm now working with the, it's still called y and x, but I'm really working in the, as you can see down here, I'm really working in the Z direction, up and down, or rotating this direction, or scaling and then same thing here in the left view. You want to work independently in these different three different views when you're working and not over here. Because when you're in your perspective view, it's going to look, you're going to think you have it right, but then you're going to, let's say, you're going to move around somehow, you're going to pan around in your view. And all I'm doing is clicking on the corners of the cube to get that rotation. And it's going to not, no longer be properly aligned. So that's why it's really important to work in your independent top, bottom, front, back, left, and right, plan and elevational views. If you get this messed up,
for some reason in the perspective view. There's, it doesn't show until you ho hover over the cube. There's a little house right here. It's called Home. And if you click on that, it will reorient you back to the default perspective view. Okay, I'm going to stop this video here and we'll continue in the next.